Hello, hello. Hi, Lisa Davis here. And I have as my special guest today, the wonderful Dr. Laura Ritchie, who I'm so thrilled is joining us this morning to share a little bit about Copaiba oil versus CBD oil. And I want to just go ahead and turn it right over to you, Dr. Ritchie, and you can go ahead and please introduce yourself, give us a little bit of background about you, and then let's dive right into our topic for this morning. Yes, thank you so much, Lisa. It's always such a pleasure to be here with you and your incredible tribe. I am so excited. So those that are new to me, I'm Dr. Laura Ritchie. I am a doctor of physical therapy and national board certified health and wellness coach specializing in women's health and functional nutrition and insulin resistance and also an essential oil educator and global team leader with doTERRA. And this is a hot topic. And we even have some people on Zoom too, so we're in all the places. Welcome to everybody who's watching live. And this is something that I get asked a lot. What is the difference between copaiba essential oil and CBD oil? And I'm just gonna quickly make sure that people can hear us on Facebook, which you guys can. Awesome, welcome Gwen. So good to see you guys popping on. And we're gonna dive right in because this is an awesome topic. Again, we get so many questions, and when we get questions a lot, we know that we need to have a discussion around this. So there's a lot of opinions about medical marijuana and CBD oil and products that contain THC. So we're going to talk more about all of this and what the difference is, and I feel like we have to start this conversation from the beginning and talk about the different organ systems. So I know in physical therapy school, I was taught there's 11 major organ systems in the body. We talk about the circulatory system, respiratory system, urinary, reproductive, integumentary, skin, the skeletal or and muscular, but sometimes you hear musculoskeletal, the nervous system, endocrine system, lymphatic system, and digestive system. And these all make up the human body. But there's another system that you might not have heard about called the endocannabinoid system. And this is kind of new, unless you've done a lot of research or work with medical cannabis, you might not have heard of this system. But there, it's actually called the most important physiological system involved in establishing and maintaining human health. So it's one of those things that I would really encourage you to do a little bit more research on and read about the endocannabinoid system, but it really does affect our whole body, basically head to toe with that. And we don't have a full and complete picture of what the endocannabinoid system does at this point, but we do know that it helps to fine tune most of our vital physiological functions. It helps with homeostasis, bringing the body back into balance there and affecting everything from sleep and appetite and pain to even inflammation and memory and mood and even reproduction. So a lot of, a lot of different systems in the body. So in basic terms, it really helps to modulate that regulation of homeostasis that bring the body back into balance for a lot of major systems and making sure that they're all working together. And I would encourage you again, do more research. It's a really interesting system. If you like to get nerdy like me, look up the endocannabinoid system <laughs> and you can read more about it. But when we talk about the endocannabinoid system, we also need to talk about cannabinoids. And cannabinoids are any chemical compound that affects one or both of the cannabinoid receptors in the human body. So the ones that we're gonna talk about is CB1, and CB2 receptors. And some cannabinoids are legal, CBD and those found in essential oils. And, and some are like THC from cannabis, which is also known as marijuana. They may not be in some states. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. So there's three types of cannabinoids and we'll go through them all. We've got CBD, We've got THC, and then we also have BCP. 
Yeah, Lindsay, endocannabinoid system is just fun to say. And real friends care about your endocannabinoid system. I love it. Yeah, they do. Real friends care about your endocannabinoid system. That's why we're talking about this this morning for sure. So let's start with CBD. And CBD or cannabidiol, this is a naturally occurring component of cannabis and hemp plants. It's made from hemp as a low concentration. So we're talking 2 to 4% there. And it's derived from cannabis or marijuana. CBD has a higher concentration. That's going to have more of like a 5 to 30%. And some CBD extractions contain some THC. But, and that's the psychoactive effects. That's the part of the plant that makes you feel like you are high though some are legal enough in our country. And CBD is often said to be legal in all 50 states, but that is controversial. If you do some reading and look into that, uh, some, some say yes, some say no um, with that. So you can kind of read about that. But the benefits include pain relief. It helps to reduce anxiety. It can, some things are showing that it can be effective against cancer, that it can help to treat seizures or other neurological issues, prevention of diabetes through helping to lower insulin levels and promote cardiovascular health. So this is the power of cannabinoids and you can check that out. And we'll talk a little bit more about kind of the controversy and go into that, but some people find great relief or effect from CBD. And we've got THC or tetrahydrocannabid oil. And this is the naturally occurring compound that's in the cannabis plant. So this is the part of the plant that makes people feel high, that causes those psychoactive effects when they smoke marijuana or use the products that contain THC there. And so supplements that contain THC are only legal in a few states. THC resembles another cannabinoid naturally produced in our brains, and that actually regulates our mood and our sleep and our memory and our appetite. And that's kind of the reason why THC or when people are high or having those psychoactive effects, they get really relaxed and really hungry because it's working on that similar part of the brain there. And then we have BCP, and this is beta caraophylline. And this is what we're going to kind of focus on in our discussion with copaiba. But this is direct, uh, this is a dietary cannabinoid. And it's found in copaiba essential oil that we have here. And it's actually in very high amount. So we're talking 60%, which is a lot when we talked about with CB, CBD, it being like 2 to 4% or some of them that high, have the higher concentrations, like the marijuana CBD, 5 to 30%. Beta caraophylline, that BCP in Colpiba is around 60%, which is huge. And this is different than the cannabinoid that CBD affects. So it directly, Colpiba essential oil directly affects the same CB2 receptors in amazing ways because it presents at much higher amount. There's higher amounts of BCP there. And it's found in lower levels in other essential oils. That we have. So think black pepper essential oil or Melissa essential oil does have some BCP in it. It's just in lower levels there. So now let's talk about the receptors because I, I mentioned CB1 and CB2. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that. But we all have cannabinoid receptors in our body and they're important and they're found all over the body in our brain, in our organs, in our tissues, in our glands, in our immune cells which I think is fascinating that we can talk about the immune system with this. But in each tissue, the cannabinoid system performs different tasks. So the goal is always the same, that homeostasis, we turn the body back to equilibrium, back to baseline there. So we have two different receptors. We got CB1 and CB2. CB1 receptors are predominantly present in the nervous system, in our connective tissue, in our organs, even in the gonads and the sex glands and organs. And CB2 are primarily found in the immune system, which is really cool, and the associated structures there. So many tissues contain both CB1 and CB2 receptors. 
and they're each linked to a different action with that. So the CD1 receptors are the ones that THC interacts with, and that's what causes that psychotropic, psychoactive effects, the feelings of getting high. CB2 receptors are what we're gonna focus on primarily, and these are the ones that don't make you high when they're affected, and these are targeted when you're using Copaiba essential oil. CBD oil actually indirectly interacts with CB2 receptors. So CBD is more of an indirect reaction there, while the main constituent of Copaiba interacts directly with CB2 receptors. So there's a difference there. So you're getting a more targeted response with your Copaiba essential oil. And these CB2 receptors are mostly found, again, in the immune system to help support a healthy inflammatory response in the body, which we really like, and can really help to reduce certain kinds of aches or discomfort. So if you're hurting, you know, physical issues there, physical pain, this can be something that can really help to support you there. So we've got the THC, and it comes from the cannabis or the hemp plants. It is legal in about half of the U.S. right now, or for at least medical purposes, um, in about half there. It's not in Texas where I live <laughs> right now. So CBD oil, this is from hemp, and it contains just trace amounts of THC. And, and I think this is kind of interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about this. But it, it's legal in all 50 states. Again, that's a little bit debatable. You're going to read different things on that. It does not make you high, but it does help with neurological issues, pain, more by, again, indirectly interacting with CB2 receptors in the body. And then we've got our BCP, our beta caraophylline, and that's that cannabinoid that's found in really, really high levels in our Copaiba essential oil. And it interacts directly with CB2 receptors. When taken internally, this C, the um, BCP in Copaiba possesses really strong antioxidant properties. So it helps with healthy cellular function, it may help to support immune function while also supporting overall circulatory health, which is really great. It can also help with the health of your gastrointestinal tract and the colon. And there's been, interestingly enough, some interesting research that has shown that copaiba essential oil, with all of its constituents there, can actually help keep the mouth and the teeth and the gums clean and healthy looking. So if you do oil pulling, where you take like a little bit of coconut oil, maybe a tablespoon, and you put it in your mouth, you could add a couple drops of copaiba and you want to swish around for about 20 minutes. So I like to do this when I'm in the shower, so it doesn't add any extra time to my daily routine. And when I'm getting ready, and you don't want to spit that in your sink, it'll clog your sink. Spit it in the trash when you're all done. But that could be a really good way to work on oral health. It's also really great when added to help keep the skin clean. So think about adding your copaiba to your crunchy smart primer. And this is gonna be a fantastic way to just help reduce the appearance of blemishes, to help promote healthy skin, all of that. And there was another interesting experimental research study that found that copaiba taken internally may actually help to support the urine, urine health and ease menstruation and aches and discomfort around that time of the month. So there's a lot of benefits here. Now when we talk about CBD versus Copaiba, Copaiba is actually gonna be a lot less expensive than CBD oil. So CBD oil can run around close to $300 for a month's supply, depends again on where you're getting that from. But Copaiba is actually $35 and this is for 250 drops that's in a 15 ml bottle like this. So it's really cost effective. It's 100% drug free. So Copaiba essential oil, there is no THC in there. It's completely drug free. So there's zero risk of containing that THC and it's 100% legal. And because it's coming from the essential oil, right, is coming from the copaiba plant there. 
there's zero chance of it affecting a drug test. And I think this is really important to understand because if you're a nurse or you're working in a hospital or you have a government job that maybe they do random health screenings and random drug screenings, you are going to be fine taking Copaiba essential oil internally. Now, I will say that there were some traces of THC concentrations that were found in many brands of cannabis and hemp and CBD oil when they were randomly tested. So even brands that said that there's no THC in CBD oil, it's, it's coming up with them when they're testing, there actually is. So do your due diligence, do your research. It depends on what effect you're trying to get, right? And I'm not here to tell you that taking one thing is wrong or like you have to find what works for your body. But I, I will say I was having this discussion with my acupuncturist who's a naturopathic doctor and he did say, yeah, I took CBD oil and I totally had the psychoactive effects from that that came in. So, you know, it's something to be cautious with. Um, and doTERRA does do so much testing, more testing than any other company that you're going to find there. So you, you again want to know when you're working with Copaiba essential oil that it's free of pesticides or heavy metals or any type of contaminants. I believe doTERRA does 54 tests on each batch of essential oil and several of those 43 are done in-house in doTERRA's labs and then 11 are done by a third party research center to test and make sure that everything is good. So quality really does matter with this. But when talking about different standards, CBD oil doesn't really meet doTERRA's standards. So doTERRA has something called CPTG and it's certified pure therapeutic grade because in the United States, there is no governing agency that is regulating the quality, the purity, of essential oils. So unfortunately, you know, Lisa knows it's like with makeup. <laughs> mm -hmm. No regulation. <laughs> right? Uh, so it's, they can write whatever they want on there. They can put USDA organic. They can put 100% pure, 100% natural. And nobody's going back to check and make sure that those claims are true. And this is why doTERRA created their own standard because there wasn't one out there. It, it doesn't exist. And so CBD oil doesn't really meet doTERRA's CPTG standards on there because there's analytical challenges with this. There's biological and efficacy challenges around this. And there's also regulatory challenges as we talked about with you know, being legal in all 50 states, all of that. So CBD is gonna be an isolated molecule that's causing that indirect receptor activity. There's some interesting things about inconsistent dosage on CBD. There's limited science as of right now on that. There's some regulatory challenges as we've talked about. CBD was actually shown to rede reduce some psychotic episodes in people, but the daily dose of that was a thousand milligrams of pure CBD oil. And I was going, whoa. <laughs> Another study showed that CBD seemed to ease anxious feelings, but the dose was 600 milligrams on that. So here's the thing, Copaiba essential oil, it's, it's a complete plant chemistry. You have direct receptor activation with that, and there's reasonable dosing guides on that. For example, one drop of our Copaiba essential oil is going to be equivalent to 60 milligrams. So when we're talking a thousand, like that's a lot. <laughs> I was, I read that and thought, oh wow, that is a whole lot. And you actually can see that right on the back of your bottle of doTERRA oil. You're gonna find a supplement fact, like what you would see on food, which actually lets you know that that oil is safe for internal use. And then you're gonna see that it says here, one drop is equivalent to 60 milligrams. So if you're nerdy like me, if you like to get on PubMed and look at the research and you're curious, when they're talking about milligrams, how much that actually means, you can dose that out pretty appropriately. But this is really important too, that please, please do not, just like with our makeup, we do not buy this from the health food store or Target or anything like that because 95% of the essential oils on the market are adulterated. 
they're synthetic. I wouldn't even call them essential oils. I would call them a perfume. <laughs> if that. And we know that perfumes are synthetic. We know that they're similar. We, now the synthetic fragrances are coming up. They're the new secondhand smoke. We know that they're harmful to our hormonal system, our endocrine system, our thyroid. So just say no to all of that stuff. But there's actually been over 100 published studies on the use of copaiba essential oil. It is 98% sesquiterpenes, which is really fun if you want to talk about the chemical constituents. So that means that they're actually longer lasting and they have a much higher metabolic potential. And doTERRA's copaiba is really special because it is a unique blend of four different species of the plant. So it's very chemically diverse. A lot of times with other companies, you're going to see there's one species in that blend, or it's not a blend, in their copaiba, but ours has four. So it really covers a lot of things across the ground that's really specific to doTERRA. But if we're talking about using it in everyday life, internal use of the oil, you can do two drops in a little veggie capsule, which I love, and you can take that morning and night daily. It's gonna be a great thing to support your endocannabinoid system, which we talked about is tons of stuff, including your immune system there. You can do a drop under the tongue each morning. This is gonna be more for systemic effects. So I actually have a little dropper top on my bottle because I do this so frequently. And you just put a drop or two right under the tongue and this helps with sublingual absorption. So that sublingual vein is there. It gets into your blood system pretty quickly and can really support you fast. And you may find, people always ask me, is one better than the other? Should I do it under my tongue? Or should I take it internally in a little veggie capsule? And I say experiment with it. It also depends on the effect, but the veggie capsules are pretty simple. You just open them up, put a drop or two, close that up, and you can swallow that. And you may notice, hey, I notice more benefit when I take it in a veggie capsule, or I notice more benefit when I do it right under the tongue. So play with that. I believe in bioindividuality, and I believe that each person's going to respond differently based on their needs and their body and how they're feeling. For digestive support, and this is kind of interesting too, because with sublingual absorption, we're getting it into the bloodstream very quickly. With doing that drop under the tongue. For digestive support, you can actually do a drop of copaiba and a drop of peppermint essential oil. And you can do like one to two drops of each. And for that, I would do veggie capsules so that it gets into the gut where we need it for digestive support. So it kind of depends on what's your end game there. What is your response that you're looking for with that? For liver support, you can actually do copaiba, frankincense, which is one of my favorites. We love frank. And another oil called lemongrass. And again, these are specific to doTERRA. They're safer internal use with that. But what's interesting is this helps with liver support, but it's also a really one for aches or discomfort. So if you are hurting, if you have sore muscles or achy joints or anything like that, this would be another good one too that you could do. And then you can also do two drops of copaiba and two drops of turmeric essential oil, which I love. We know that turmeric is a powerhouse for a healthy inflammatory response in your body for aches or discomfort, anything like that. And you can do this in a veggie capsule morning and night. And this is something that Dr. Hill was teaching us and he said, if you do this consistently, two drops of each in a veggie capsule morning and night, you're going to feel different in a couple weeks and you're going to notice a big difference. So I've been playing with this, which is fascinating to me. I love to kind of use these all together. You can use them aromatically. So essential oils, you know, we talked a little about internal use. You can use them aromatically where you can actually diffuse copaiba, put that in your little diffuser like I have here for that aromatic support. And it really helps for respiratory support. You can add a citrus, so something like wild orange or lemon, and that's going to help to elevate your mood. The citrus oils are happy oils. They get you going, they make you feel good, they boost your mood. And you can even combine with something like Siberian fur or one of our floral oils like lavender, and it's going to help relax. So pipe is one of those cool oils that pair it with a citrus and it's going to uplift your mood and make you feel good. Pair it with a floral like lavender and it's great to help you transition for bedtime or nobody's stressed, right? No, no stressed out mamas out there. <laughs> we need a little relaxation in our lives. 
<laughs> this yep. is a good one. All the relaxation, right, girl? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> All of it. And, and then we have topical use. So you can actually apply this over the spine. That's going to be a really great place for neurological support. If you have acne or maybe you just want some anti-aging effects, wrinkles, anything like that, just to support your skin, you could do two drops of copaiba. If you want to get really crazy, you could even add a drop of tea tree oil or melaleuca with that and put that over your face. Use it with your face wash or I just love, it's an easy button for me to put it right in with my primer in the morning and you're getting all the benefits. And this again is, is specific to crunchy. Please do not add essential oils to toxic makeup or face washes or anything that is, that is not going to serve you well when we're talking about natural things like these go together, but it's because crunchy is pure and is going to be safe for that. So don't try that with, well, I don't even know the brands of that stuff because I don't buy it, but don't go to Walmart and buy something like that and add essential oils to that. It's not going to serve you. And I've noticed a big, big difference with doing a daily routine of copaiba and frankincense under the tongue, which is really helpful, or in a veggie capsule. We call it Frankenco. Frankenco is like Laura and Lisa. It's like dark chocolate and almond. Like it just goes together. Yep. <laughs> They're buddies. All um, the love. All the love, all the love. So you could do a drop or two of each under the tongue and that's gonna be a really nice one. But I just noticed it changed how I felt. And specifically, I had a sweet nurse reach out to me who was doing CBD oil because she had really bad discomfort in her hands. And she was concerned though, because they do random drug screenings at the hospital and because of traces of THC and some of those things, so we actually got her started with Copaiba and she told me, you know what, I noticed that it actually works better for me. And so this is something, again, for 35 bucks to get 250 drops in here, it's a really convenient way. And I love that we have options, right? You can take it internally, you can apply it topically, you can diffuse it. It's gonna support you in lots of different ways. But if I was to highlight a couple, this is really great for liver and antioxidant support. Very good for cardiovascular health. It's going to help with that immune system and that immune response because, again, all these things targeting those CB2 receptors that we talked about, digestive support, even healthy neurological function and healthy respiratory function. Lots of things there that can help you and just bring some soothing and help the nervous system. Even if you're one of those people that gets anxious feelings a lot, this is gonna be really helpful, as well as all of the benefits to the skin that we talked about. And then just a little nerdy facts about Copaiba, and this is specific to doTERRA, because doTERRA has something called co-impact sourcing. So we actually source our oils from the places in the world where they thrive and they grow, and we work directly with the farmers and the artisans. There is no middleman, there's no broker, there's not gonna be something in there that's, that's questionable. These people are paid fair trade, and we get this beautiful plant material because we know that everything from the soil, the temperature, the humidity, even the time of day that these plants are harvested affects those chemical constituents. And an essential oil is only as good as its chemistry. If you like to geek out and nerd out about that, there's a website called source2u.com. And on the bottom of each of our bottles of oil, there's a little code there. And you can actually go and type it in at source2.com and see the testing and the chemical constituents and all of that for your batch of oil. Full transparency. And this is why doTERRA and Crunchy go together because Crunchy has worked so hard to have number one ratings with the Environmental Working Group. That made a big difference to me. When Lisa reached out to me and she showed me that, my ears perked up because I was like, wow. You can, you can go into a Whole Foods or natural grocers, and I had this Skin Deep app, and I was scanning makeups, and it says it's natural, right? It says it's organic, just like with our essential oils, and they have horrible ratings. And I was like, well, I don't want to put this on my skin now. Like, that's going to be absorbed into my bloodstream. This is not good. So same thing. Like, we know what the results are with Crunchy. They've been very transparent and open with us with that, and it's the same thing with 
doTERRA and article Piva that we can look up that testing. So I always tell people like, if you don't know where that oil was sourced or you don't know the testing that's gone on with that to make sure there's no heavy metals or weird stuff in your essential oil, that's really important. But Copaiba is actually sourced from the Amazon rainforest. So my mom calls it the Wonder Woman oil. <laughs> like the Amazon. <laughs> she says, it's my Wonder Woman oil. It makes me feel good. <laughs> she's um, adorable. She's, she is. We, I, I love my mama. Um, and, and I think that's really cool that it is sourced from there. Um, and they're sourced ethically and to be sustainable with the earth and to be very respectful of all of that. And doTERRA actually again partners with those harvesters because a lot of these people have been growing copaiba or these plants for generations. And so we make sure that it's sustainably collected. We make sure that the trees are taken care of, um, that people are paid fair trade, that these people are taken care of. It's this beautiful cycle of it works for everybody and everybody's kind of taken care of there. And copaiba trees can actually grow to more than a hundred feet tall, which is kind of cool. So that is my copaiba versus CBD <laughs> oil spill. Did we talk about everything? Anything that I missed, Lisa? <laughs> no, I think that was incredible. It was so thorough, and you really covered the science in a way that was, you know, very approachable and understandable. And I truly appreciate that. Um, and cause it does, it gets very, I was, you know, doing some reading on it myself and I'm like, this is getting really technical and complicated. So I'm glad that you broke that down for us to make that very understandable step-by-step. Step. And, and I really think it's just so valuable to hear that side-by-side -side comparison of, you know, their efficacy and, and really it comes down to, there's a lot of factors here, but I just really appreciate having all the information in hand so I can make the best decisions for myself and for my family. And so that I can share with my clients and even you know, my, my advocates, you know, really what is the best choice for them. So I truly appreciate that. I think we should maybe open it up if anyone has any questions. Um, we can certainly oh, take a minute and, and if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Let's open it up for questions. We've got a couple people on Zoom. We've got a couple people on Facebook Live. Okay. If you guys have questions, type them in the chat, interact with us. I love that so much. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to hear from uh, Dr. Blair, we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions. We'll just give it a second because there's always that lag, that delay with um, yeah. Facebook. So, yeah. And just yeah. to add too, if you're curious about learning more about essential oils, Lisa has created this beautiful safe space here in this group, in this beauty conscious group to ask questions, to get support. Her tutorials are fantastic, guys. I didn't even know what Crunchy was. I didn't know what primer was. I didn't know what anything was. And she has just taken me by the hand and supported me. And I do something similar with essential oils. Like Lisa is my go-to girl for safe beauty, for non-toxic makeup. People ask me all the time and I'm like, oh, I stay in my swim lane. And I was like, <laughs> oils. I'm like, you need to talk to Lisa. She will take care of you. And we have a space for that too. It's called the Learning with Dr. Laura Group. You can search mm -hmm. there. And I teach monthly education classes on essential oils. This month is on internal use of essential oils, which is another hot topic. Yes, I know this is, this really is the month for um, like touch point topics. This really is like this is a hot button zone this month. <laughs> it really is. I love it. It's like we are not avoiding controversy this month. Um, and I just want to give a, a quick shout out to Dr. Laura because, you know, I had dabbled in essential oils before and frankly, um, what I had experienced was not ideal. And um, I really wanted to take a different approach. I really wanted a thorough knowledge and a basis. Like I just wanted to understand them more and what they could do for me and how I could really use them safely. And, and, and um, Dr. Laura just took me by the hand and really just shared everything with me that I needed to know in a way that was just really, really wonderful and kind and supportive. So I, that's really, you know, I can't say enough good things, um, you know, about it, about Dr. Laura and about Jutera. And there certainly are other lines out there that are very careful, you know, with their essential oils and, and they really, they do have, they have testing as well. I know they have high standards, um, but I just also felt the support that I got from you was truly um, life-changing for me in terms of where to get started and, and what would serve me best in my family. So I just want to um, say that in support of you and, and, and how much you've helped me. Oh, thank you for that, Lisa. I so, I so appreciate that. And my job, first and foremost, is an educator. I love to teach. I love to share. And I have a YouTube channel. You can search Dr. Laura Ritchie on YouTube. I've got over 350 videos on health and wellness and essential oils. 
and this stuff is open to everybody. So mm-hmm. feel free. You can find me on social media at Dr. Laura Ritchie or in our education group or on YouTube. I, I love to share and that information's free. It's open to anyone. If you're curious, we've been talking about Copaiba. If you're like, hey, I want to try that. I want to order some and see how it works for me. Reach out to me. Comment below or send me a message. I'd love to hook you up. Or if you're just curious about essential oils in general, like let's hop on a call. Let's have a conversation because I love to hear your specific health and wellness needs. And then we can create a plan together of something that we can start to implement to help you feel better. Because I wish I came to this world with essential oils through actually getting very sick with cancer. I had a very rare sarcoma and being diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease and being told I had chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and there's nothing that they could do for me. And so I went searching for answers and that included changing my lifestyle, changing my diet, also bringing in these beautiful essential oils. And I become very passionate about giving people options with holistic health and natural remedies and things. So if that's calling on your heart, if you'd like to talk a little bit more, like let's, let's connect. And I would love to help and serve and get really specific for your needs too. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Laura. I truly appreciate your jumping on and, and sharing all this great information with us about Copaiba. I know um, if I just, I just want to jump in for one second. I love Copaiba personally. Um, actually, my favorite use is, and I hope I'm using it the right way. <laughs> um, one or two drops under my tub sublingually at night. And I find that it actually helps me like drift off to sleep. And it helps, it seems to really help reduce my anxiety. And maybe it's just in my head, but I can literally feel it like entering my body. And I'm like, ah, like it just feels so good. So that's my personal favorite use for Copaiba. Oh, I love that. And that's something that we didn't even talk about. But yes, it's a powerhouse for sleep. Yeah, it's and I have struggled with my sleep for years. And so between that and evening primrose oil for me, it seems to be really doing the trick lately. So um, I am a big, big fan just even for that one reason. Yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, I guess I will be seeing you shortly in your wonderful group because I will be hopping on to share a little bit about how I use these beautiful essential oils in my everyday makeup and skincare routine. So, yeah. So everybody go ahead over to the learning with Dr. Laura group. You've got about 20 minutes. So go get you something to drink, get your water. Go some water with lemon. <laughs> Grab a little notebook and a pen and we'll see you guys back. We'll have a little intermission, go to the bathroom, do what you need to do. And then uh, we'll all come back and I can't wait to learn from you. I always learn so much from you. So, so I am so so thrilled. Much. Same. Same. Thank you so much, Dr. Laura. Oh my gosh. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much for letting me be here and all of your lovely ladies. Thank you guys for joining us. Absolutely. Bye.